All right, you guys, this is Ross. Today we're gonna do something rather interesting. This is probably one of, in my opinion, this is one of the coolest things that you can do when growing fruit trees. Uh, I've always really been amazed that first off, our fruit trees are not propagated by seed. They're propagated by cutting. And typically a lot of that is done by grafting. And, you know, it's amazing, I think, we have something super beautiful here in the form of some espalier plums. And I'm a really <laughs> happy with the form. I love how the trees turned out over the last three years. We did a great job uh, training them, getting them to the right uh, length of the branches, then tying the branches down. And even now they're in their, I think this is their third season from when I planted them and they're fruiting. They flowered. But the problem is at this point, I'm not really seeing many fruits because back in late March, we had a very cold winter low that came in or spring low that came in of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We had 21 night, then 21 the next night, and then 22 the night after. And that really killed all the flowers on these two Japanese plums. The Japanese plums, they tend to flower very early along with the apricots. Uh, I also find most of my pluots flower very early as well. And to me, that just is quite worrisome. Um, I do find that the pluots I grow, um, they bloom in a succession, uh, more so than it seems like these Japanese plums. This here is, I think, let's see, what variety is this? This is Santa Rosa. And then this over here is a beauty plum. And I have yet to really, I've tasted actually both of them. Not had a really fair trial of each plum, but so far I find they both, they both taste rather similar, which is kind of like that Japanese styled plum like Santa Rosa or Satsuma, uh, you know, kind of like a black skin, skinned plum with the yellowish amber interior that to me doesn't wow me. Um, I've never really been a big fan of those plums, even at the grocery store. Finding out when, they, when I grow them myself, they kind of have a bubblegum flavor to it. It tastes like bazooka, bazooka bubblegum. I'm not really a big fan. So my whole thought process here is that, well, what I'm gonna do actually instead is I have myself two varieties that I'm gonna graft onto these plums and it's gonna be a bit drastic. I think maybe some of you guys might be horrified because <laughs> these are so beautiful. Um, but I know that in the long run, especially when I take these trees with me, uh, that I'm gonna be better off because I'm gonna have varieties here in my hand that are much tastier than these particular fruits, at least to me. Maybe you guys enjoy Santa Rosa. I still have to give Santa Rosa and Satsuma a chance um, I actually think this beauty plum does a nice job of setting at a very young age and producing fruit at a very young age. So there's some good qualities there. Uh, but what I have here is actually the uh, Geneva Mirabelle plum, which is supposed to be a very, very good tasting plum. And the uh, Lavinia plum, which I've, if you read about both of them, they get really good reviews for flavor. Now there are other varieties that I'm interested in, like the yellow transparent, the Coe's golden drop. There is um, a number of Mirabelle and gauge plums. I actually am growing green gauge and may actually get to taste that one off my own tree this year. I have to double check to see if any of the flowers actually set. But the point is, is that, uh, you know, I would rather grow plums personally because they're not one of my favorite fruits, I'd rather grow them for the best tasting fruits possible. And if I have to battle with some disease maybe with these varieties, they may not be very disease resistant. They may not be um, really the best plums for this climate. I'm willing to take that risk. I'm willing to do the battle that needs to be done to taste the highest quality fruit possible. And that's really what we have to achieve here what, what we have to do is change the genetics because the flavor, it's all in the genetics here, guys. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm basically going around to the trees and I'm looking at branches that already exist on the tree 
and making a judgment call, can I graft to this particular branch? Um, so I have a number, the arms here have to come out. Let me just show you exactly what I'm doing. Because I have to take out both of the arms, all four of the arms on each of the trees, and then do eight grafts. So each arm, if there's four arms, each arm I have to do a graft onto that particular arm. Uh, this is a bit challenging, I have a camera job here. So here we go. This, this is interesting because what we have in here is the arm that goes all the way across. It's tied down to this wire. Now, I could actually just graft to the arm. Um, or, which actually right here is some growth that if I take some of this off, let's take some of this off here so you can see what the heck's going on. And I can see what's going on. Is that we have a limb right here that actually would be a pretty good uh, place to graft. I'd rather personally graft to this thinner wood um, if possible because I'm going to be doing a cleft graft and of course the thinner the wood because my scions are quite thin the better off I'm going to be. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is totally cut this entire thing off here. This entire arm is coming right off. Man, you know, it kind of hurts <laughs> um, now that all of this growth is just gone, all that time that I spent. I know some of you guys are probably like, oh my God, what did Ross just do? Um, but for me, I think it's, it's just for the best. And then we're going to do the same exact thing right over here to this particular arm and that I'm going to remove some of this new growth. Let's see what we're dealing with here. There is this shoot right here I could maybe graft to or I could graft to the arm itself. Let me um, cut off the screen stretch tape. This is what I use to tie this down to the wire. We actually have more over here. Let's cut this out. He has enjoying the side of my head. Um, all right, so we got the tie off. And I guess what I'll do is I could even graft to this, this branch. What I'm looking for essentially is woody material that's a year old um, that is suitable for, uh, for grafting that has a similar um, caliper, right? Similar width, but I don't know if you can always easily find that. So I think what I'm going to do actually is probably just graft this to the arm itself. You know, what, let me just cut this off. Maybe I'll change my mind. But maybe we can graft to this, thinking about this a bit more methodically. And then, of course, the same thing is going to happen here at the top, the top of the tree on both of the arms. Here's actually a really good place to graft to right here. And believe it or not, I could just make one graft here and then bend the arms down at a later date. Um, so maybe I will do that as well. And I'll just cut out both of the arms. Yeah, let's do that. That makes a lot of sense. Just removing all this stretch tape here first. You know, it would have been nice to have done this <laughs> a while ago, but it is what it is. This is essentially what you could even do is graph multiple varieties onto. Uh, I could do a four and one if I really wanted to. So I'm going to cut this off, this arm on the left. This might be, to some people, very extreme. And people might be considering, I think, well, Ross, is this going to hurt the tree? It's not great for the tree, <laughs> right? 
uh, we're essentially stressing the tree out because now, you know, this really should have been done during dormancy or really shortly after the tree woke up. We're not that far away from that point, but uh, this is definitely not ideal. All right. So that is what we're doing here, guys. <laughs> Look at this crazy, it's crazy. It just seems so crazy, but I know later on that this is gonna be for the good. This is all for the good. So here we have the growth that we're gonna graft onto. You know, it probably would be nice to actually save some leaves for the tree, but, and then cut the leaves off after the graft actually takes. I don't think we're gonna worry too much about that. All right, so I'm gonna do my graft now. You guys will get to see this. And then again, this just basically the same, you know, everything I've done just gets repeated. So there is the, there it is. That's what we're gonna graft to. I'm gonna use my knife here and just shave this down. The nice thing about grafting stone fruits, apples, pears, I find that the grafts just take very, very easily. And uh, you don't really have to worry about them like persimmons or figs something else that could be a, a lot more difficult. Actually, this, the, um, the caliper on that is a lot smaller than I thought. So I guess I'll use this scion instead. No worries. We got a lot of scion wood here. This variety I'm doing is uh, Geneva Mirabelle. This was basically a Mirabelle plum that was hybridized, I think, uh, by one of the universities. I don't remember the, the name. Might be Cornell or one of them. But they've done, a, obviously, a very good job, uh, you know, a thankless job, a job that I'm really grateful for by doing that because now they've taken a Mirabelle plum, which, uh, you know, typically is not very disease resistant, struggles uh, as these European plums do here in the Northeast. Oh, that wasn't a good cut there. Let's try this again. So a lot of the European plums, again, they just don't, they struggle quite, quite a bit in the Americas. So it's nice to be able to have that disease resistance package built right in. All right, here we go. So it's taken here on the, there's good contact on the left side. Is there good contact on the other side? There is. We're gonna tie this rubber band nice and tight. I think that's probably quite critical for this, this graph up here. We need to get this to really form, be solid. Um, and really fuse well. We need both sides of the cleft graft to really fuse and take for this to really be a success. And ideally, we should support this, I should support this for the first year. Now we have a lot of buds actually on this little piece of wood. It's really not, by my mind, you would think it's only really an inch of growth. The scion's only really an inch, but there is 
uh, actually five buds potentially that that will leaf out from that point. Got some new parafilm here, trying to find the, there we go. Parafilm is really, really nice guys. Um, I find it has a ton of uses. And very simply, you just wanna stretch and then wrap. Stretch and then wrap. Uh, it doesn't, I find, actually adhes well to itself unless you do that stretch. So you gotta stretch. Um, some other nice tips that you might consider is actually um, wrapping the Scion with parafilm prior to doing the graft. I'm gonna do a one little turn actually down here at the bottom. Anyway, that's pretty solid. Um, that's great, that should take, considering the circumstances, that should be um, a success. So that's what we're gonna do here, guys, to all these branches. Um, I hope that you found this one interesting. For me, at least, this is definitely something that uh, is gonna be worth it. And hopefully you guys can understand actually how exciting this can be while also being so daunting or um, you know gruesome. There's so many other words that I could say that really have a negative connotation to them. But for me, this is also quite exciting in that we're now taking what was really just not a very tasty piece of fruit and creating a very pe uh, tasty piece of fruit. And really, believe it or not, in about a year or two, the form will be back to what it was. So it's not really the end of the world. This year, we'll have good uh, growth from this this point and hopefully it gets long enough so that we can tie that down to the wire by the end of the season and then next season we'll be growing from that uh, from that growth and may even have a couple flowers here and there you never know so anyway guys thanks for watching this one if you enjoyed it please hit that subscribe button check out some other of our videos we'll see you guys for the next one take care